Shalom. Today we're going to talk about Joseph's clothes. In Hebrew, Big Day Yosef. Of course, we all know about the coat of many colors. Genesis 37.3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. In Hebrew, this is Ketonet Hasim. There's only one other person in the Tanakh who has such a coat, and this is Tamar, the daughter of David, who was later abused by her half-brother Amnon. 2 Samuel 13, 18. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her, for which such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. So here we see a slightly different translation of diverse colors. The actual word kutonet just means a coat or a garment. Genesis 3.21 Unto Adam also to his wife did Jehovah God make coats of skin and clothe them. Exodus 28.39 And you shall embroider the coat of the fine linen, and you shall make the mitre of fine linen, and you shall make the girdle of needlework, this being for the priest. So this word is quite normal and used in a normal sense. The pasim, which is going to be translated as many colors or diverse colors, comes from a word pas, which is actually Aramaic, it's used in Daniel, and it means either the palm of the hand or the sole of the foot. And we see it in Daniel 5.24. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. So how does this flat or palm of the hand come to be translated as many colored? We can see that the word pas can be translated perhaps as a hand breath. So the ketonet pasim, the coat of many colors, is maybe a striped coat, that it's a silk garment, and each hand span was a different color, as we see in this lovely picture. It also might mean that the coat came down to the palm of the hand, the sleeves extended to the palm of the hand, where the coat itself came down to the ankles, which would indicate that the person was of some wealth. They don't have to work. A person who works needs a shorter sleeved garment and a, and a shorter garment so that he can more effectively use his hands and feet during his work. It's also possible that it indicates a special embroidery at the edge of the garment or at the edge of the sleeves that would show the rank of the person. The word pas has a lot of interesting cognates, including Pesach, and I will put a link below in the linguistic analysis for that video. So even by the 3rd century BC, we see in the Septuagint, the word pasim, which is the striped or the multicolored, is translated in the Greek as pokilos, and that just means diverse. It's used here in Mark 134. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. So it just speaks of the different kinds. In the Targum of the first century, the word is translated mitsuyar in Genesis 37.3, talking about Joseph's coat. This is a post-biblical word, which means to be colored or painted or have figures on it. So this multicolored garment is already in the translations very, very early on. And we know what happens to this coat when the brothers sell Joseph to the Ishmaelites and he winds up in Egypt. They take the coat and they dip it in an animal's blood to show to his father. And so he loses his coat. Later we see Joseph, steward in the house of Potiphar. Potiphar's wife keeps making passes at him. And one day, there is nobody else in the house besides the two of them, Genesis 39, 12, and 13. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass, when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand, was fled forth. So the word for garment here is beged, and this is the common word for clothing. So why is it that Joseph can't seem to keep his clothes on? We find out that this verb root, bagad, from which the word beged clothing is derived, means to deal treacherously or to transgress. Psalm 78, 57. 
but turned back and dealt unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. Exodus 21.8 If she please not her master, who has betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed. To sell her into a strange nation, he shall have no power, seeing as he has dealt deceitfully with her. The concept of clothing and the idea of dealing deceitfully or deceptively has to do with covering up who you are. Your clothes might speak something differently of you than who you really are on the inside, the same way as if you act deceptively, you're not really acting out of your true intentions. There's a famous story called Clothes Make the Man, in which there is a gang of robbers, and they dress one of them as a policeman to kind of be the lookout. And eventually, the man becomes so enamored of his position, reflected by his police outfit, that he turns the gang of robbers in. He becomes like the policeman he's dressed as. Eventually, Joseph is dressed by the Pharaoh. Genesis 41, 42. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Finally, we see Joseph now as he is meant to be. He is the second in command in Egypt and his true clothing has been given him by the emperor, by the pharaoh. Another person who gets a change of clothes is Joshua the high priest in Zechariah 3, 3 through 5. Now Joshua is clothed with filthy garments, again, begadim clothes, and stood before the angel. And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you, and I will clothe you with change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments, and the angel of Jehovah stood by. Just as Joseph is a picture of Yeshua, here is Joshua the high priest, the same name as Yeshua, and he is getting a change of garments. And likewise, Yeshua, we see him in several different sets of clothing. Mark fifteen seventeen, And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it upon his head. Now, Yeshua is the king, but the world's concept of a king and what a king should look like and how a king should act does not suit Yeshua. He is the king of kings. So we see him in one set of clothes, but they take those clothes off of him. In John nineteen twenty three and 24, then the soldiers, when they had crucified Yeshua, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part, but also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. I have always wondered what happened to this garment. There are so many people with relics of ancient saints and first century skull of John the Baptist or Longimani's spear that pierced Yeshua in the side. People have little slivers of wood that they claim to have come from the cross, but nobody ever talks about what happened to this garment. Nonetheless, we see Yeshua naked on the cross, as Job said. Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. Yehovah gave, and Yehovah has taken away. Blessed be the name of Yehovah. However, at the end of time, Yeshua will be clothed with the glory from the Father. Revelation 19, 12 through 13 and 16. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. You think of, of Joseph's coat of many colors. And his name is called the Word of God. And he has on his vesture, on his clothing, and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now we can see him in the clothes that he belongs in, dressed truly as he is, that reflect his true identity. Now we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Talking of Yeshua the, the Messiah, 
who will change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. As we are being made into his image, also the Father will clothe us in new clothes. Isaiah 61, three, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Jehovah, that he may be glorified. Isaiah 61.10 I will greatly rejoice in Jehovah. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Until next time, Tasimita Enayim al Keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.